Hi guys, I realize I haven't done cacti and succulent tour in a very long time. I just moved these out. They were inside. They're a little late to the party. The other cacti and succulents have already been moved out to the polytunnel for at least a month. But I somehow overlooked these and I've just been caring for them inside. But uh, let me show you what I've got here. I have an aloe oik and I have a star aloe next to it. And back here is a gasteria. And this one is the atrocious aloe repot. And it's looking pretty good after its long winter inside, but in a month it's gonna look even better after it's in the polytunnel. And guys, look at this sculpture I found of a cactus. It's a metal sculpture, isn't it wonderful for the garden? I love it. I found it at Home Goods. So let's go see what's up in the polytunnel. So guys, the polytunnel's been a seedling factory since early spring, and I just have a few of them left right here at the edge, but the rest of the tunnel is dedicated to my cacti and succulent collection. And I just gave them a huge water this afternoon with the hose. Up until this point, I've just pretty much been bringing up a watering can and giving them some water. But this was their first really good drench. And they seem pretty happy about it. So let me just kind of scan so you can see what's up here. As usual, I did lose a few cactus while they were inside. Um, and I haven't replaced them. First of all, I'm not doing as much shopping because of COVID. And secondly, cacti and succulents don't do well in my house in the winter time. So uh, I'm not going to be replenishing my collection too often unless I see something I just can't resist. So there is an overview. And let me go ahead and give you a closer look. We'll start here with my elephant ear. This was a rescue and it didn't do so well in the big pot so I've now put it in a bonsai pot. And next to it I have a wonderful aloe which is really enjoying spending the summer here in the polytunnel. And you're going to see an amaryllis leaf in the in the picture here too. I have a, my amaryllis bulbs over to my right. And then we have an Apuntia microdiasis in the back, a bunny ears cactus. A couple of barrel cactus here. And um, this one has kind of looked anemic. And since I've brought it out and given it a little bit of fertilizer, it has gotten a little greener, I'm happy to say. I'm just happy it's still alive because this has been going on for a while that it's sort of been yellow. So I was worried about it. But hopefully this summer it'll bounce back. The cacti and succulents love it out here in the polytunnel. And the one in the back is doing well. That one has white spines. And this is an Apuntia cylindrica. This one I always hurt myself every time I try to handle it. It's very spiny. Those glochids really, really do a number on your hands. And then I have a lot of the smaller cacti under here. And I decided to put them on this end of the tunnel on these shelves because uh, the table is a bit warped and some of these smaller pots will tip. So at some point I'll have to get some, a new table set up. But I've got lots of nice cacti here. A lot of them have uh, been separated from their tags. But uh, they're doing well. I know this is a mammalaria. These are, I believe, Gymnocolysium. I believe. And then this is a Silver Arrows Cactus. And we have a Mammalaria back there. And a few random smaller Apuntia. And this is some type of, um, I think this is some type of Stenocereus. 
And this one at the end is a mammal area as well. Kind of got an interesting shape to it. And then down here I have my burrow's tail succulent and I just put it in this little container but I have a feeling that's probably too much dirt for it. But uh, every time I handle it all the leaves fall off so I didn't want to repot it for a very long time so I'm going to have to really make sure that that dries out. We'll see how that goes. It's not the ideal size pot for it but it just happened to be available. And then my adeniums, which are in front of my big pencil cactus in the back. That one always looks good. That is one that likes my house, even in the winter. And it loves to be out here in the summertime. But that one is surrounded my, by my adeniums. And uh, they have been really slow to start this year. It's been such a cool spring, and they like it hot. So I feel like they've gotten a lot of false starts, and um, some of them look quite naked, as you can see, but they have green growth on them. I'll zoom in so you can see a little bit there, but they're definitely alive, just slow to start. And all of those are different, so if they do decide to flower, uh, they should all be different color blooms. And that one in the back is is the most robust at the moment. And then I have a Pylocerius Azurus here, and I love that one. Not sure if you can tell in the light, but it's kind of a bluish hue. And it's just a beautiful plant. Does really well. Seems to be pest resistant. And then I have some other Pylocerius here. This one had something happen to it, probably a pest of some kind, but it seems to be surviving okay. And I'm thinking of taking the top off. I still haven't made a decision yet as to what I'm doing, because the rest of the cactus looks healthy. So, I don't know, we'll see. Maybe I should just let nature take its course and see what the cactus decides to do. This one is one of my favorites. It's a notocactus, Linen Housei. That does really well. It's, it's got really nice soft spines. And then this is another Silver Arrows Cactus. I'll get down so the light is better. But that one um, looked like it was going to die back at the bottom. But maybe that's what an older one looks like. This one is quite old. I don't know, maybe three or four years I've had it. But um, it looks pretty green at the top, so it's kind of interesting the way that has grown. Here's another barrel cactus. And I have my patchy podium here. Everyone loves that plant. Let me try to come over here. But it's doing really well, and it's such a slow grower, but that's okay. I don't mind. It's an interesting plant. It's got kind of a spiny trunk there and then uh, I didn't mean to pass my beaver tail cacti cuttings these were cuttings uh, guys and they're about three feet tall I'll show you their parent plant in a minute but they've done even better than their parent plant and I've got another serious type cactus here that was part of a dish garden, but it seems to be the only survivor. And then up here I have an Apuntia Snow. And that has a very interesting structure. Kind of fun. And of course I love the fuzziness. It's very thick fuzz. So I once read that the ones that have hair like this, very thick hair, are the ones that come from the hottest places and it's um, it's a mechanism for the plant to keep itself from getting sunburned so I thought that was interesting an interesting tidbit and then back here I have some Apuntias and a Stenocereus back here very tall and it's going to be needing a new pot let me try to get up without making 
the camera wiggle too much but that one's going to be needing a new pot it is a little top heavy I'd have it towards the back there in case it decides to go over but uh, I do have a couple of apuntias back here this one is an apuntia basilaris and you'll have to forgive me guys a lot of my plants have been separated from their tags and then this is some type of purple apuntia. It, it never really does much. It can have a purple hue at certain times of the year, which is really beautiful. I think it's an apuntia violacea. And then I have a dish garden here, which I just refreshed pretty recently. And it has aloes and haworthias in it. It's doing well. Seems to like it out here. And my Trichocereus patchenoi is looking pretty horrible. It had mealybugs, so it's got a lot of uh, scarring on it. And um, it even, I even lost one of the branches. I think I see a mealybug. I had to remove them by hand. Yep, there's a mealybug there. But there are spiders and birds that come in here, so they should get that one. But it's not looking its best. It, it's looked better in the past. And then down here I have a beautiful star aloe. And um, my aloes turned purple when I first brought them out a month ago. It takes them a while to acclimate to being outside and having their, the sun change. But now it's going back to green. And it's plumping up. It's looking quite nice. And next to it I have some dragon fruit seedlings and I actually cut a dragon fruit in half from the grocery store and planted the seeds and this is what came up and this and has survived about three years later. So a nice little dragon fruit plant. And next to it, this was all originated from a moon cactus that died. So this one was the base of the moon cactus plant because they put they graft them on top of dragon fruit and when I cut off the dead moon cactus it started throwing out arms just like this one and I kept removing those arms and putting them down in the soil and it would make a whole new plant so I've done that over and over and as you can see it's turned into quite a nice little dragon fruit plant I hope you can see it in this light. Let me try to get it from this angle too, but it has such a, a really nice structure. And let me show you over here. I have a my large aloe. This one also turned purplish, kind of a burgundy purple color when I first brought it out. And it's gone back to green. But if you look over here, you can see there's still a little bit of like a burgundy color on there and this one always loves to be outside in the summertime and I expect that it will really really do well out here oh the cacti and succulents really enjoy being out here let's just turn around here and I'll show you these these are the parent plants from the cuttings that I showed you over here that are three feet tall and they look so much better than their parents. I had to do a refresh on these and just trim off the best looking parts. And um, for some reason this pot did a lot better. It's uh, a lot more of the cuttings made it than this pot. So I'm not sure what the difference was. It might have even just been how they were situated in my house near the window. This one might have gotten more sunlight. Who knows, but um, at any rate, their children seem to look a lot better than they do. But they're still still doing fine. And then the final thing I have back here that isn't a cactus or succulent are my amaryllis bulbs. And I just grow them on and let them get nice and healthy foliage. And then in August, I'll probably force them into dormancy so I can have some amaryllis blooms for the holidays. But they live out here with the cacti and succulent collection. And everything seems so happy to have gotten a drink. And they're enjoying the sunshine. 
and hot weather. I'm hoping those adeniums start bouncing back. And I just wanted to give you kind of an update and show you how things are going. As usual, I did lose a few cacti and succulents over the winter. And um, I'll try to give you more updates. In about a month, everything is going to be very lush. And I don't usually get a lot of blooms on my cactus because I don't have a situation where I can let them get chilly. And I think when they get chilly and feel that difference of temperature, sometimes it puts them in blooming mode for the following spring. But I just take them into the heated house, and I don't think that's the best thing for bloomers. So thanks so much for tuning in, and I hope you're having fun with your collection. I'll see you next time.